I'm Larry Walther. This is PrinciplesOfAccounting.com, Chapter 24. And in this module, we are going to look at a general frame of reference for making rational business decisions, followed by some specific examples. First of all, the general decision-making approach is to identify your decision alternatives, log the relevant costs and benefits of each choice, evaluate all of the qualitative issues, selecting the most desirable option based on a judgmental balancing of quantitative and qualitative aspects. The process begins and ends with judgment. One should clearly look at both quantitative and qualitative factors in trying to make business decisions. Let's next turn our attention to some specific examples starting with outsourcing. Outsourcing is where we hire someone outside of the business to provide goods and services that we have customarily or historically provided internally. This can involve tech support, data processing, payroll services, even actual manufacturing of goods and services. These are sometimes called make or buy decisions. We have to decide whether to make a product ourselves or continue to provide the service or hire someone externally to do that. All relevant costs and benefits need to be considered. Recognize that if we outsource, some costs may not be able to be avoided, such as rent of a facility under a long-term contract. Importantly, unavoidable costs do not vary and can be disregarded in the analysis. So by example, better shown by example, Pilot produces software for handheld global positioning systems and they maintain a tech support department that's around, available around the clock. Here's the budget. It totals $635,360 consisting of labor, utilities, rent, leasing of phones and computers, and annual depreciation. Total cost of the department. The labor is made up of three people per shift working three shifts a day at $12 an hour. Utilities and maintenance is fixed but would be avoided if the unit were shut down. The building is leased under a long-term contract. It's unavoidable. The phone and computer equipment is leased, but we can cancel that lease without penalty. And the annual depreciation is going to continue on the furniture and fixture since it's something we own and hold. The tech support services, look, we're just going to charge you $12 per tech call. You're running about 50,000 tech calls a year, so the total cost of outsourcing is $600,000. At first glance, you might say, well, 600 is less than the 635,000. But that would be the wrong analysis. We need to drill down on our data and recognize that the building rent is going to continue in any event. The furniture and fixture depreciation is going to continue in any event. We'll avoid the labor. We'll avoid the computer leasing, a few other things. But what we're going to find is the relevant items are 415360 as shown by this slide. We can avoid 415000 but no more. Why would we spend 600000 to avoid that? So we're better off continuing to provide our own tech support. Let's look at how we can look at capacity constraints. Outsourcing can free up some capacity that would allow us to produce other goods and services or expand our overall production, in which case we want to look at the contribution margin associated with the additional production. There is a term called opportunity cost, the cost of a foregone alternative. Let's see how this comes into play for Mueller building systems. In an effort to free up capacity, they've outsourced production of their roof trusses, and that outsourcing frees up 10% capacity in the factory to produce even more buildings. We've got direct labor to produce the trusses, currently producing at 3 million eight, direct materials, current production, 4 million, variable factory overhead, 2 million, and avoidable factory overhead, a million. So the relevant cost to produce the trusses is 10 million eight. But by freeing up capacity, I'm assuming we're able to produce an additional 10%, which increases our overall margin of $3 million. So we can spend up to $13,800,000 on outsourcing, given the cost that we're able to avoid and the additional contribution that we're able to generate by having additional capacity freed up. However, we also want to consider the cost of placing and tracking orders, freight, customs fees, commissions, and so on. And also we want to think if the decision results in employee layoffs, there could be increases in employment taxes and so on. We also want to think about qualitative issues, outsourcing places, quality control, production scheduling and so on in the hands of a third party. When we're involving international outsourcing, delays can be associated with logistical issues. There may be risks associated with relying on suppliers in potentially unstable, politically unstable regions. There's language barriers and then also some customers may view the outsourced decision unfavorably. Another decision management must make on occasion is whether to accept special orders. A special order is one that involves terms or pricing in particular outside of the normal pricing schedule for the business. Management must determine whether the special order sales price exceeds the variable cost of production and any variable selling cost associated with the special order. By illustration, we have a lure manufacturer, Lunker Lures, produces the Rip and Rogue Lure. Their absorption costing structure shows $1.10 to produce each unit, 20 cents materials. 
40 cents labor and 50 cents for factory overhead. Of that factory overhead, 30% is variable and 70% is fixed. In addition, Lunker Lures pays a dime commission for each unit sold. And so they've been approached by Walleye Pro Fishing World who wants to order one million walleye wiggler lures. The units would not compete with existing sales and they're offering to pay one dollar per unit. The sales representatives are paid a five percent or five cent commission in this case rather than the normal dime. This offer is priced below the noted cost of production of a dollar and a dime. However, Lunker Lures should accept the order nonetheless as is shown in the following analysis. The selling price of a dollar at least covers the variable cost of production, material and variable manufacturing overhead and leaves a non-manufacturing margin of 25 cents from which we subtract our five cent commission and we get a contribution margin of 20 cents per unit times the million units. So we'll actually enhance overall profitability by $200,000 by accepting this order. Clearly what's happened is the fixed cost were going to be there in any event. What we want to do is look at the incremental revenue and the incremental or variable cost associated with the offer and it computes favorably. We do need to be careful, however, in looking at special orders because we can run into capacity constraint issues. We want to make sure we have capacity to produce these lures without incurring additional fixed costs, in other words. Sometimes an error can be made by looking only at the contribution margin. To demonstrate by example, suppose Fishing World also placed a special order for a bass fishing lure with a 30% margin on a $1 selling price. Would you want to accept the lure that makes 30% margin or 20% margin? You might say, well obviously the 30% is better, but when we throw in capacity constraints, maybe an analysis says we only have room to make 600,000 of the bass lures or 1 million of the walleye fishing lures. And in this case, 1 million units with a 20 cent contribution will enhance our overall profitability 200,000, whereas the higher margin item we can't produce as many and will only produce a 180,000 overall increase in profitability. So in all likelihood, we're going to want to select the walleye lure as the special order that we accept because overall profitability is higher even though it involves a lower per unit margin. Another decision has to do with whether to discontinue a product or department. And management should not jump to the conclusion that every department that's losing money should be discontinued or eliminated, as fixed costs may continue. The appropriate analysis is to compare net income with and without the targeted unit for elimination. So here's an example. We've got four departments for this retail sporting goods store, fishing, hunting, camping, and golf. The golf department's losing money of $30,000. Should we discontinue golf? Maybe it looks like we should, maybe we can avoid that loss. But drilling down, we learned that 70% of the general administrative costs could be eliminated. The other 30% would continue. Rent and depreciation would continue to be incurred for the store. Utilities could be reduced by half for that department. Selling costs could be eliminated for that department. And the unavoidable costs are to be shifted equally to the other departments. And so when we rerun the spreadsheet, just picking one line item here, you may want to look in the textbook and look at all the line items. The rent, which totaled a million for the entire facility, was born $250,000 by four departments. Now it needs to be absorbed $333,334 by each of the three remaining departments. And note that Camping World now has a loss. So we can create a downward spiral by transferring costs to other departments. Are we going to now discontinue camping? What would be the effect? How would that cause a cost shifting? So we ultimately may find we're better off keeping golf in place because it's at least covering its variable cost of operations and contributing toward covering the fixed costs that cannot be avoided. So a very sensitive analysis in terms of looking at what departments we should maintain versus those that should be discontinued.